In this video, we're going to take a look at the topic of the irregularity of shapes. So we need some shapes first of all. So let's add in US counties and a link to where you can find these files is in the description. And also I'm going to add in US states. I'm going to zoom to the lower 48 US states and I'm going to change the CRS, the coordinate reference system, to 10200 8 and then I'm going to click OK. All right, so we've got states. Now let me like make the states transparent with a white thicker stroke. All right, now so now we can see US counties in green and we can see that some of them are very irregular shapes and some of them are almost like squares and rectangles and that's what this video is about we're going to explore the irregularity of these shapes but before we do it for counties let's do it for states now the concept of shape irregularity is quite a interesting one and sometimes people have used it to for example assess the extent to which political boundaries are gerrymandered but let's have a look at the states. Now we can see some states like Colorado, uh, Wyoming and so on are quite square looking. If I double click on the US state layer, what I'm gonna do first of all, I'm gonna add a bounding box. So we've got the simple fill geometry. I'm gonna add another one. And what I'll do here is I'll make it a transparent fill and I'll make it a yellow outline. And I'm just in this for demonstration purposes. So what I'm gonna do in the simple fill I've added, I'm going to change that to geometry generator and I'm going to use bounds. And what this is going to do, it's going to add a bounding box around each state. So if I hit apply, let me make that a little bit thicker. We can see a bounding box around each state. So in some cases, it's quite a nice, neat fit. Let me turn on the state names for a minute, turn the labels on for the states. Okay, so for somewhere like Colorado or Wyoming, the state's quite square shaped, but in other ones it's much more irregular. Now for the states layer, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new column to the attribute table. So I'll open the table and we can just see there's a number of different columns in it. I'm gonna click on the abacus button and I'm gonna add a new column. I'm gonna call it irregular. This is a shape file, so the column field name can only have 10 characters max. I'm gonna calculate a decimal, a decimal number and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate something called Hausdorff distance. So I'll just type in house into the search box. And what this does, it compares the shape of a geometry to another geometry. So in this case, we're gonna compare the shape of states to the shape of their bounding boxes. The bigger the difference, the more irregular a shape will be. So to do this, I'll double click house off distance, and then I need to enter two geometries. So the first one is just gonna type in dollar sign geometry and comma, and then I'm gonna type in bounds, open bracket, dollar sign geometry, close bracket, and then finally close bracket to close the whole thing. So what's happening here is you'll see a preview and it generates a score for each state. Now, if I choose Colorado, the number is very small. If I choose say Wyoming, the number is very small, but if I choose a state like, let's choose West Virginia, the number is large. So the larger number means a more irregularly shaped state. I'll click OK and we'll have a new column now called irregular. When you do a calculation like that, it turns on edit mode. So I'm going to click the pencil icon to toggle off editing. And then I'll hit save. OK, great. And if I sort by the irregular column, we can see Alaska is the most irregularly shaped. 
Then we have Hawaii and California and other ones. At the other end of the scale, Wyoming, Colorado, District of Columbia, they're the least irregularly shaped. So that's the concept, it's measuring shape irregularity. If I wanted to do the same thing, but using circles, so let's go to symbology for the states layer. In the geometry generator, if I, instead of using bounding box, I used minimal circle. So let's add that in here. Minimal circle, geometry, and the segments. I'm gonna use 500 segments to make it a smooth circle. And let me copy this expression. So if I choose how irregularly shaped is the state in comparison to its minimal bounding circle and the shapes are not circular here because of the coordinate reference system used we could do that as well and i'll go to okay and i will go to the attribute table and we'll add in another column for this one call this column circle i want to update the whole table so I'll untick the only selected features one I'm gonna type I'm gonna use um decimal number I'll go to recent I'll double click the one I used before but instead of bounds I'm just gonna copy in or paste in that geometry for minimal circle I just need to put a comma in between the two okay so this is comparing the shape of a state to a circle to a bounding circle for the state I'll click OK and it's gonna calculate the extent which the shape of a state is similar or not to a circle. So we should get slightly different results. I'll hit the toggle editing mode button and hit save to save the results. Now, if I sort this, um, Alaska is the least regular. Click it again to sort. We've got District of Columbia, Guam, Rhode Island. So it's slightly different results. So that's the concept of irregularity and Hausdorff distance. So I'll double click the state layer and in the symbology, I'm just gonna remove that geometry generator symbol. I hit minus, I'll click okay. So we've got our states back. What I'm gonna do now, I'm not gonna calculate a new layer for the counties. I'm just gonna use that Hausdorff distance to create a style for the layer. And to do that, I'll just double click on the layer. I'm going to symbology and I'll choose a graduated classification. And in the value box, we do see the columns in our attribute table. But what we're gonna do for the value is use an expression. So I'll click the expression button. And because I've already used the Hausdorff distance, it's down here and I can double click it. And this is going to apply that same Hausdorff distance test to each geometry, so each county in this layer. So it's comparing the shape of the county, its geometry, to the shape of its bounding box. And it returns a score. And in the feature preview box at the bottom, I can see all the different counties. So I'll click OK. And I'll just classify this. It'll take a few moments. And then if I hit Apply, I move the window out of the way a bit, we can see some results, but it's a bit ugly, so I'll do a couple of things. I will click on the symbol drop down at the end to configure the symbol. I'll hit a simple fill and I'm going to use 0.1 as my stroke color. I'm going to change it to white. Click OK. And the color ramp, the default white to red, I'm not going to use that. Instead of that, I will use, I will just click it actually. I'm going to edit it. So we'll start with a pinky color and we'll go to a darker red color. Let's make it a bit darker still. Okay. And now we'll hit okay. And what we see is a representation on the map of the irregularity of each county shape compared to its bounding box. So it's a kind of measure of squareness here. I'll double click on the layer again and we can see that this is a value that we're calculating kind of on the fly here we haven't added it to the actual 
attribute table for a layer. We could do that like we did for the states, but in this case, I'm just using it to color the shapes for each individual county. Let me double click the state layer and just turn on for the labels a little dark buffer so that we can read those more easily. So this is uh, something that's quite interesting. It allows us to look at the irregularity of things. We can calculate a new variable or we can just symbolize. So if I zoom into Kansas, for example, we can see shapes are generally pretty regular, pretty similar to their actual bounding box shape. And if I wanted to label these counties with that score, I could double click on the county layer again, go to symbology, and I could just copy the value here from the value box, go to labels, and go to single labels, and I can paste the value in there. Now, if I click apply, we'll see what happens. We get loads of decimal places, but if I go before value and type in format, underscore, number, open bracket, after the last bracket, at the moment, I'll type a comma, then three, then I'll close the bracket. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna format those long decimals to just have three decimal places. I'll hit apply. And let me give it four decimal places to distinguish between the low values. I'll click apply. Okay, so now what we have is a score for each individual county. And the higher the score, the more irregular the shape is. Let me just zoom to this level. And what I'll do one more time, I'll double click the county layer and I'll just make sure in label rendering that I'm using scale dependent visibility. And if I click this button here, set to current canvas scale, it just means the labels will only come on when I'm zoomed into that scale or lower. So when I zoom out, I'm not swamped with labels. And if I zoom around, what this does, we can see, particularly in those areas like California or Arizona, that don't have many counties that are super regular shapes compared to the bounding box. It just allows us to pick things out. Sometimes people use these kind of things to look at things like gerrymandering. Although, of course, there's probably more to it than that. In many cases, when you have coastline, it can be quite irregular. But that's how, in QGIS, you can use Hausdorff distance to assess the extent to which shapes are irregular. If you want to know more about Hausdorff distance, there are loads of things online about it, including Wikipedia, and it's pretty well explained, but it's a mathematical concept and it's really easy to implement in QGIS, as you can see. So hopefully you find that useful and or interesting and you've picked up a few tips from this video.